Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning to you all. <coughs> I feel uh, small and inferior appearing after Minister Manuel, <laughs> physically and psychologically. <laughs> so um, I'm going to make my speech interesting by uh, starting from the conclusion part of my speech. And you can leave the room after that. Uh, at your own will. But before that, uh, let me greet uh, DG uh, Dr. Peter Holmgreen, uh, my fellow plenary speakers, high-level panel discussion and forum speakers, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I also would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh, the Center for International Forestry uh, Research, C4, and the Ministry of Forestry, Republic of Indonesia, uh, for giving Brunei the platform uh, to share our country's experience in sustainable forest management in this uh, Forest Asia Summit 2014. And I hope to uh, provide the link between what Minister Manuel has said and the panel discussion after this on collaborative efforts on forest management. So as I said, I will straight away uh, go to the conclusion part of my speech, which is that climate change and related issues like food security and natural calamities is a global issue. For that, uh, Brunei Darussalam, my country, uh, will commit uh, the following. Firstly, to continue to offer uh, our tropical uh, rainforest for use as research and study on terrestrial flora and fauna, marine life, as well as forest microbes and microorganisms. Secondly, to uh, continue to commit sustainable and responsible agricultural practices, we will commit, we will limit our agricultural production uh, to no more than 1% of our land areas even for as important as the production of staple food such as rice. And we will continue to leverage on technology and know-how to achieve our food security either through the use of higher uh, variety of crops or more productive and efficient farmers through the use of uh, mechanization. And finally, this is the crucial part that we will continue to collaborate with our neighbors sharing our borders in the island of Borneo under the Heart of Borneo Initiative. My statement will center around three main topics, a lot less than Minister Manuel, seven um, inspiration, but I got only three which is uh, Brunei's strategies in protecting and conserving forests. Secondly, the preservation of uh, peat swarm forests. And thirdly, how we address the challenges of forest loss and degradation. Now, on this first topic of how Brunei strategize its policy in pro protecting and conserving forests, despite uh, being a small country, Brunei Darussalam has gained international recognition for having uh, a world-class tropical rainforest of which majority is still in pristine condition and protected by law passed some 80 years ago in 1934, the Forest Act. Now, with this Forest Act, our country are still 75% covered with trees. And the said Forest Act provides the basic law for administration of the country's forests. And the law also emphasizes the importance of biological diversity conservation, bioprospecting, access and benefit sharing, enforcement, and forest protection. And in addition to the law, there's also in place a national forest policy to guide us on the management and utilization of our forest resources. 
And this policy, this national forest policy, emphasizes the importance of forestry to the environment. In other words, as the Minister Manuel mentioned, putting forestry center into everything else. And about the role of research and technology, uh, human resources development, and the implementation of a sound and balanced forestry programs and management strategies. In other words, in Brunei, there is a strong political will and active participation of all levels of society to protect and conserve our natural forest heritage. Moving on to the second topic, the preservation of peat swamp forest in Brunei, where they are very much intact and around 80% are still in good quality and believed to be the highest proportion of intact peat swamp forest in Southeast Asia. Realizing the true protective and biological value of the peat swamp ecosystem, the government took immediate action to preserve the forest by banning the utilization. And this proved to be a wise decision because the indirect benefits that the peat swamp ecosystem to the country go beyond our expectations and significantly contributed to our aggressive economic initiative. The protective benefits that the peat swamp ecosystem provide against natural calamities save huge amount in terms of life and properties and the sustainable supply of fresh water from the pit swamp ecosystem has sustained our oil and gas industry operations. We understand that there are uh, more benefits to be had in terms of the rich biological diversity and the indigenous uh, use of our pit swamp forests. As such, the sequestration of massive carbon deposits of our pit swamp ecosystem as well as in our natural forests will be our great contribution to the global climate change initiative. At present, we are opening our windows for more research collaborations in further understanding the ecosystem and to develop effective management strategies for the benefits of the global communities. And the last topic is how do we address the challenge of forest loss and degradation. Despite uh, its size, or rather because of its size, Brunei also faces some challenges on forest loss, specifically the conversion of state land forests to other land uses, such as for shelter, agricultural, and other development activities in the country. These developments are inevitable and need to be handled carefully. As such, there is a necessity to implement a landscape holistic approach that would address the conflicting interests for land and related resources. And one such approach is the Hara Borneo Initiative, which is a transboundary agreement among the country of Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, and Malaysia to facilitate uh, the conservation of the forest resources at the same time allowing development to take place sustainably. More importantly, the Hada Borneo Initiative aims to minimize deforestation, forest degradation, and the associated loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services in the island of Borneo. It is a short introduction to the heart of Borneo, but it does require a big forum to tell about the initiative the heart of Borneo. Now, the increasing appreciation of forest conservation in Brunei and the value of the biodiversity has also led another approach in forest management and administration. We have decided to stop timber harvesting in our production forest reserve in order to maintain the integrity of our forest ecosystem. 
This is not to say that our timber harvesting operations or the selective felling system is not sustainable. It is just that we recognize the increasing value of our forest ecosystem based on its ecological services and biological diversity to be of much value than the timber resources alone. Simultaneously, we also recognize the contribution of our wood-based industry to the national economy. As such, timber harvesting operations will now be confined in a forested area intended for forest plantation development. Market-based incentive will soon be in place to encourage the industry to invest on modern machineries in order to increase efficiency and produce value-added wood products. And to complement the establishment of forest plantation, the government will encourage private-public partnership through the three farmland concept. And under this concept, potential private investors will be given the opportunity to enter into an agreement with the government and invest in forest plantation establishment with compatible land uses such as ecological tourism, agroforestry, and bioprospecting. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me once again repeat what I said earlier, that is climate change and related issues like food security and natural calamities is a global issue. Brunei Darussalam being a small country, but with a big heart, makes our initiative uh, more manageable by putting important sectors like forestry, agriculture, fishery, and tourism under one ministry, under one authority, the Ministry of Industry and Primary Resources is a rational strategy. However, smallness has its own disadvantage. Any small changes in climate will have a profound impact on the country. Therefore, we, as a responsible member of the United Nations and its related bodies, Brunei Darussalam will commit, as I said, the following, to continue to offer our tropical rainforest for use as research and study on terrestrial flora and fauna, marine life, as well as forest microbes and microorganisms. Secondly, to continue to commit to sustainable and responsible agricultural practices. We will limit our agricultural production to no more than 1% of our land area and will continue to leverage on technology and know-how to achieve our food security either through the use of high yield variety of crops or more productive and efficient farmers, including the use of mechanization. And finally, I would em emphasize that this is something that can relate to the panel discussion after this to continue to collaborate with our neighbors sharing border with us in the island of Borneo under the Heart of Borneo initiative. And of course, we cannot do this alone. Uh, the issue at hand requires a regional, a regional and global actions and efforts to come up with better ideas, policies, action plans, strategies, and implementation. These policies need to be translated into actions and implementation, which will certainly require funds, expertise, knowledge, infrastructure, as well as substantive assistance financially and technically from potential partners, donors, investors, and developed nations. This is the short content of my remark. The full text of it is available online and is at the Secretariat. Finally, I would like to conclude by expressing my sincere thanks once again to the summit organizers for giving us the platform and the opportunity to share our country's experience in forest management and administration. I hope we have contributed in one way or the other in meeting the objective of the summit. Thank you for your attention, and we may, may we have a productive day ahead of us. Thank you, Minister.
It is an honor to welcome His Excellency Under Secretary Demetrio Ignacio, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Philippines. Uh, Your Excellencies, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, my talk is also not as awe-inspiring as that of uh, Minister Pulgar Bidal, but it is no less uh, informative. So if you will allow me to share with you some of the initiatives we are doing in the forestry sector in relation to the themes of this summit. We in the Philippines have been very successful in degrading our forest. Our forest is now down to 7.2 million hectares or 24% of our land area, one of the lowest forest cover in Southeast Asia. But we have started to recover the forest that we lost. To stop further depletion of our forest, our president has imposed a logging ban in all natural forests nationwide in 2011, the first in our history. Together with intensified enforcement, we apprehended 25.5 million board feet of illegally processed and illegally cut forest products since 2011. We filed more than 1,200 cases in court the past three years with 186 persons convicted and counting. As a result, the number of uh, illegal logging hotspots in our country was reduced by 84 percent, from 197 hotspots to only 31. Shown on the screen is the spatial representation of the hotspots before and after the log ban. We will further reduce these hotspots until there is none. From the confiscations, we have been able to produce more than 146,000 school chairs and repaired more than 300 school buildings. Before, we sell what we confiscate through public auctions. However, suspected illegal luggers were the ones winning the auctions. To expand our forest cover, our president established in 2011 the biggest reforestation program in our history, the National Greening Program. We intend to plant 1.5 billion trees in 1.5 million hectares in six years. We will plant more trees in six years than what we planted the past 50 years. This is less than what they do here in Indonesia, but it is already our biggest. This program intends to address poverty, food supply, biodiversity, and climate change. For the past three years, we have planted more than 683,000 hectares. This is equivalent to what we planted the previous 23 years. This year, our target is to plant 200 million trees in 400,000 hectares. By the end of the year, we would have planted more than 1 million hectares. Aside from the benefits from additional forest, the program has so far employed more than 168,000 persons in upland and rural communities. The program also provided food crops and cash crops to the communities such as fruit trees, coffee, cacao, rubber, and others. Reforestation is no longer the exclusive domain of our ministry. It is now a convergence program among the environment and natural resources, agriculture, agrarian reform, local government, education, and other agencies. We believe that we are now on the road to sustainable landscapes with this convergence. By the end of the program, we expect to reverse our forest situation, whereby we will then have more forest areas than, than degraded areas. And we will increase our forest cover from 24% of our land area to 30%. Mm -hmm. 
Our new forest would eventually absorb about 28 million tons of carbon every year. This will help us achieve carbon neutrality. In addition, we estimate that about half of the total budget of the National Greening Program, about 30 billion pesos from our national budget, or about 682 million US dollars, will go directly to the communities through jobs and income. This will contribute to inclusive growth, especially in the upland and rural areas. We also impose state governance standards in our program. Our national greening program is community-based, meaning the communities are the ones contracted to undertake the reforestation. We grow our own seedlings through our network of 22 colonial nurseries. Those that we cannot grow, we procure through competitive bidding in accordance with our procurement law. All program sites are geotagged, meaning each site has pictures taken progressively with GPS reading, date and time when the pictures were taken. And anybody can see the geotag pictures in our website. We use to monitor and validate our reforestation efforts, we use unmanned aerial vehicles. The reports submitted by our field personnel are all under oath and notarized by lawyers. We use good governance, transparency, accountability, checks and balance, and the latest technologies to ensure that every money we put in is used for reforestation. We have done much in our reforestation, but there is still much more to be done. The report of the IPCC, the recent report indicated that without the reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, impacts from warming could get out of control. This has serious implications for the Philippines. We are one of the most vulnerable countries in the world on the impact of climate change, as Typhoon Haiyan painfully reminded us. This makes our participation in this summit important. There are many things that all of us can share, but there are more things that we can learn from each other. We wish you a productive summit. Thank you very much.